Okay. Let us now see about terminal depreciation and balancing charge. You must be thinking as to what is this. Well, let me explain it to you. Now, there could be two situations in case of a power undertaking. The first one is that you charge depreciation based on the WTV method. So if you are charging depreciation based on the WDV method, then the tax treatment that follows is the same as has been discussed earlier. Okay? And that was that the same consideration etc. is deducted from the written down value of the block of the asset. But what happens in case you are following the straight line method? If you are following the straight line method, and again, just to reiterate, this is applicable in case of power generating or generating and distributing undertakings. Please refer to the previous video on where all it is applicable. So two things can happen, you know, you sell the depreciable asset and the sales consideration, let's say you got an asset for 100, okay, depreciation claimed to date was 50, the written down value was 50. Now if you sell this for 30, then there is a difference of 20. This 20 is allowed as a terminal depreciation, where depreciable asset is above, above means of power generating units is sold, discarded, demolished or destroyed and same consideration is less than the actual cost, less depreciation allowed. So my actual cost was 100, depreciation allowed was 50, so the value was 50. But I sold it for 30. 30 is less than 50 and there is a difference of 20. So this 20, so this difference is basically allowed as a terminal depreciation. So you get a terminal depreciation of 20. Please note that the actual depreciation that may have been allowable might have been less. But you are given a terminal depreciation in the year in which the asset is sold because there is no concept of carrying forward this 20 in the terminal year when the year has been sold. Now let's say instead of 50, you would have sold this asset for 80. And there is an excess of 30. What happens then? Let's read it out. This is something which is chargeable as balancing charge, where an asset as above is sold, destroyed, or always destroyed, and the sale consideration is greater than actual cost less depreciation allowed. So in this case, my written down value was 50, I sold it for 80, so my sale consideration was greater than actual cost of 100 minus the depreciation. Least of the following is chargeable to tax as balancing charge. Cost less WDV or sale consideration less WDV. So you compute these two things okay, and whichever is the least one you get depreciation of that. So let's say, okay, I guess I need to take a bigger example of this. My cost was 100, okay, less depreciation was 50, my written down value was 50, Now I had two cases here, okay, I had a gain of 70 and I had a gain of 30. The 
cost less WDV. So what happened here was, in this particular example, I had claimed a depreciation of 50. So cost less WDV was 50, while my gain was 70. So in this case, I will claim 50 as balancing charge. Look, the reason for this follows is that this 50 I had claimed in the earlier year against profits and gains of business and profession. So if my gain is of 70, I break it into two parts, 50 and 20. 50 is taxable as balancing charge. What happens to 20, I will come back to you. Whereas in this case, because my cost, my profit of 30 is less than this depreciation of 50. So this 30 entirely is chargeable as balancing charge. Again, the idea is whatever you've claimed as a deduction till date, to that extent, if there are any gains, we charge it off as PGBP income as balancing charge, right? What happens to the rest? Capital gain on asset on which depreciation is claimed on SLM is the sale consideration less actual cost of the asset, which is nothing, if you see, which is nothing but this 20. I mean, sale consideration is 120, less actual cost is 100, so 20 is your capital gain. In this case, there is no capital gain. Why? Because your sale consideration is less than the cost of acquisition. Just to reiterate, whenever you have any depreciation left behind, which cannot be claimed in earlier years, okay, and your sale consideration is less than the WDV, which is nothing but the actual cost less depreciation allowed, then this difference is allowed as a terminal depreciation in the year in which the asset is sold. In case the sale consideration is greater than this WDV, then the amount is broken up into two parts. One, to the extent you've already claimed depreciation in the earlier year, it is taxed as balancing charge. This is the formula. And the balance is chargeable to tax as capital gain. 